Are you confused about what SSD to get for gaming? Does it even impact performance? Does it limit your FPS? What about building a new PC versus just upgrading an old one? Well, I'm going to take all of these questions, condense it down, and give you my top five recommendations for best gaming SSDs coming right up. Hi, welcome to PC Builder. I'm Jason, and today we're going to demystify SSDs and we're going to give you our best recommendations for the top five for gaming. The goal here at PC Builder is to take all the complicated mumbo jumbo and the complex market economics and break it down for the ordinary PC Builder so that you can get the best price to performance. Now we're still a young channel, so if this is the kind of content that you want to support, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for even more PC building content to come. It really makes a big difference. With that, let's jump into it. So let's just start out by asking the question, do you even need a solid state drive for gaming? Um, as of the date of this video, right now, technically you do not. It will not increase the frames per second that you're getting in your game. It'll make your computer much better in terms of loading times. You won't be sitting there staring at loading screens forever. You won't have to wait forever to your, for your system to boot up. Things will feel a lot snappier. So there's that, all those quality of life improvements. But in terms of actual FPS, you will not see any difference right now between a regular mechanical hard drive and any kind of solid state drive. You just won't. But I wanted to highlight that it is the day is coming and it may be coming sooner than you think when in fact you will absolutely need a solid state drive to keep pace. Over the summer, World of Warcraft for its Shadowlands expansion said, hey, everybody, we're going to add a solid state drive requirement to our list of system requirements to run the game. Now that's because World of Warcraft has become a very, very big game and it needs to pull all of the game engine, needs to pull all of these various assets off of the uh, off, the, off the drive in a continuous stream in order to keep you seeing what you want to see. Now, in order to do that, the World of Warcraft team wanted everyone to go out and upgrade their drive. Of course, there was a big uproar slash temper tantrum. <laughs> but look, some folks can't afford it. I get it. Um, so they went ahead and removed it for the Shadowlands expansion. But let this kind of be the canary in the coal mine in terms of gaming, that this is coming down the pike. Games are becoming more and more demanding. And NVIDIA just launched its RTX 3000 lineup and talked about how they're actually going to use new technology so that the, the GPU, your graphics card, is actually going to communicate directly to your, your, your system storage, your solid state drive, your hard drive, rather than going all the way through the CPU and the memory and the motherboard and having to go around that. It's going to go directly there. While on the face of that, that makes it seem like, hmm, maybe you won't need that fast storage, if, if it's a much more direct route, I could also see game developers coming to rely on that and putting more and more uh, performance uh, impacts on the, on, the on the solid state storage. So let's briefly go over the three different types of storage. The first we have is obviously traditional hard drive space. It's a mechanical spinning platter. You can hear it spin if you listen to it. They're cheap, they're slow. They use a wired connection called SATA 6, and it goes at 600 megabytes a second. They come nowhere near close to saturating that. Uh, so the next type of storage is the one we're talking about today, which is solid state storage. That uses physical chips, got no moving parts, physical chips instead of mechanical devices. It's three to four times as fast as the fastest hard drives, and it comes close to maxing out that SATA interface at 600 megabytes a second. Finally, we've got M.2 solid state drives. Now these plug into the motherboard either through a dedicated uh, slot on the motherboard or through a PCIe expansion card that you then plug into the motherboard. It's important to note that these drives, especially at the budget level, can be either SATA interface, which is limited to that 600 megabytes a second, or the much faster NVMe interface, which is many, many, many times faster. Okay, I've convinced you to buy a solid state drive. How much space do you actually need? Well, if you're, in a, if you're building a brand new machine, I wouldn't go any smaller than about a 500 gigabyte drive. So you'll find them around 480 or 512, but in that area. Uh, I would 
definitely recommend looking at getting one terabyte of space. And we'll go through the specific drives in a second. You can decide if that meets your budget needs. If you're upgrading a computer though, and you're gonna use this as like your main boot drive or you're gonna replace a drive with this, then I would look at how much stuff you have on your existing drive uh, and get a drive that's at least that big, but probably maybe twice as big as that. So if you've got about 300 gigs worth of stuff on your drive uh, and you want to go up, I'd look at getting either a 500 gigabyte drive or a one terabyte drive. And, you know, when I say 500, I mean around 500 because they range from 480 to about 512 gigabytes. So that's what I would think about getting in terms of the size of the storage. So then really briefly, what separates the good SSDs from the slower ones and the not so good ones, the cheap ones? Well, it mostly has to do with the quality of the storage. I'm not going to get into TLC versus QLC, but just know there is a difference there for gamers. You just don't care. And then it also makes a big difference whether or not the, the drive has DRAM. So or or really good host memory buffer and HMB process on it. Now it's actually really difficult for most drives to tell whether or not they have DRAM. Typically you have to look up the spec sheet, you have to find people who've broken it, broken it down. The manufacturers are not good about telling you about this. That's why I'm gonna give you some very specific recommendations in a second because this is a real pain in the butt. But basically drives with DRAM have a buffer in them. It's like their own memory, right? So they can suck up a whole bunch of stuff and they can spit it back out in a much more efficient process. Uh, so I would recommend for a system drive, this is a drive you're installing Windows to, and probably even some of your favorite games, I would make sure I got an SSD with DRAM on it. The dirt budget ones, no, they don't have DRAM on them. Most gamers, you'll probably never notice the difference unless you do big file transfers on them. Uh, and then you're like, well, why all of a sudden did I was going fast for you know, like a millisecond and now I've dropped down to like hard drive level speeds. Yeah, your, your drive lacks DRAM. That's that's what that's about. Again, only happens during really big file transfers. So for most gamers, you won't see the difference. But I am going to recommend for system drives, we go with a drive with DRAM on it. And let's get into those recommendations. Okay, so we're going to recommend our first drive. And it's a, a little bit of just going to relieve some pressure on you. It's just sort by lowest price. Now, I don't recommend getting the sort by lowest price method for your boot drive. This is the drive you're going to put Windows on. Um, you want to drive with some DRAM on there or a really good HMB process. I'm going to show you a couple of those drives in just a second. But if you're really hurting for cash, if you're just trying to squeeze out a system and you need to save every last dollar, you can go to PCPartPicker.com. I'm not endorsed by them or I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Just a great tool to use. And go ahead and sort by lowest price. And what I've done in here, so for instance, I've just come down here to the filters, I've clicked SSD, and then I clicked uh, the size of the drive here somewhere, and I just put in 400 gigabytes, basically. That way I don't accidentally get rid of any of the 480 gig drives by putting in 500. And then we just sort by, sort by price over here, and you can see just a whole bunch of these drives come up and you will see them trade places depending on sales and things of that nature. The TC Sunbow X3 is often the cheapest, but right now it's the Motion Enhanced Raw or the Team GX2 or GX1 or the A Data. Anyway, you get the idea. These are all dirt cheap drives. They don't have DRAM. They're not going to be fantastic system drives. But if it's this or a hard drive, I would just take the lowest price one and be happy with that. You will see in here some things like the Team MS30, and you think, oh, look, that's an NVMe drive. It's not an NVMe drive, unfortunately, though, and let me, it's a SATA drive. You can find that out by either kind of reading more into it, or you look at the interface. If you see the interface, it's got one little, one little thing here, one larger interface, and then one little thing here. Anytime you see that, that symmetrical interface like that, as opposed to just one large thing and then one little thing, that's a SATA drive. So three of them is SATA, and one large one and one small, that's an NVMe drive. NVMe drives are much, much faster. Okay, now let's do the second drive we're going to recommend, which is a drive, if you don't have an NVMe interface, and you don't want to go out and buy a PCIe card to plug in there, because that's another $10 or $15 on top of the cost of it, but you do want a drive with DRAM that you can use for your system drive. This is where your Windows is going to be installed to. It's going to be snappy. It's going to be a good drive. 
I'm going to recommend the two and a half inch uh, Team Group T Force Vulcan 2.5. Again, links to these products are going to be down in the description, so you don't have to scramble and write that down right now. Either the 500 gigabyte or one terabyte models are going to be fine for you. They all have DRAM in them. These are all going to be drives that are going to going to be able to write at good sustained speeds and frankly, just really, really fantastic drives. As an alternate to this, go ahead and get the Western Digital Blue Drive. You'll find that also linked down in the description if for some reason the T-Force is sold out. Okay, for drive number four, I guess we're recommending here. This to me is the best NVMe SSD on the market for gamers. It's not the fastest, there's far faster drives, but gamers don't need super duper fast transfer speeds. They just need enough speed to get the job done. And the Silicon Power NVMe M.2, and it's called the A60 drive. This is where I think most of you wanna be. Now this is a drive, obviously you have to have an M.2 slot or you have to have a PCIe card that you can plug an M.2 uh, card into. So if you have that, if you're building especially a new machine, this is the drive that I would zero in on. It's $55 right now at Newegg, similarly at Amazon, typically only available in the US markets. Uh, and I will give folks a, an alternative to look for, for who, who are outside of the US. Super snappy, super easy installation. I happen to love it because you don't have to do any cable management for this thing. You just plug it into the motherboard, you screw down a screw, you never have to worry about running cables or is the cable connected properly or seated properly, all that kind of nonsense. It just freaking works and it works a lot better than, um, than a typical two and a half inch solid state drive, a SATA drive. Now, one thing to note, it does not have DRAM. Somebody might point that out. In this case, it's all right, because this actually has a really good implementation of what's called host memory buffer, HMB. It basically steals a little of the system's memory in order to give itself that, that DRAM buffer. And it works really, really well. I've read a lot of reviews on this one, and frankly, it's gotta be the best price to performance drive out there for NVMe drives. Finally, I wanna recommend the Kingston A2000. It's a prosumer level drive, so the, the speeds on this are gonna be quite a bit faster and the performance is gonna be very, very good. It is gonna cost more, except, as I just said, if you're not in a US market, I'm gonna recommend a different drive. The Kingston A2000, as far as I can tell, in the UK, in Australia, Europe, other markets. This is the drive that kind of takes the place of the Silicon Power A60, the one I just showed you, in terms of being one of the cheaper drives on the market. Well, it also happens to NVMe drives. Well, it also happens to be, frankly, a prosumer. Uh, it's, it's not consumer, it's not professional, it's kind of prosumer in the middle uh, level of performance. So I would strongly recommend this. And if you are somebody who is occasionally in the US gonna do video editing, you're gonna do some big file transfers and you're like, ah, I need something that's a little bit stronger. This is also the drive I would, I would urge you to check out for gaming. Okay, quick wrap up, get off of hard drives and get yourself an SSD. If you have space for an M.2 drive, you definitely wanna get an M.2 NVMe drive, one of the ones I recommended. If you don't have the uh, the physical space in your motherboard, go ahead and get one of the SATA SSDs I, I recommended. And if you're just scraping the bottom of the barrel for budget, it is okay to just pick the lowest, sort by lowest price. They're all pretty much the same at that price point um, and feel just good about that. That's gonna do it for the video today. If you like this kind of content, please take a second, give us a like and subscribe and click the bell icon. That way you get notified when we release more content. Thank you very much and have a great day. Talk to you on the next one.